Hello Watch Enthusiasts. <clears throat> a few days ago I gave you a top few uh, watches to buy for perhaps a Christmas present. But uh, today I'm going to review a watch rather than my previous um, videos which didn't involve a watch of mine. But this is a watch, a uh, vintage watch, so if you want to watch programs and uh, episodes about current watches then this isn't for you. But I just thought it would be, be nice to share with you on this day, my favourite watch in my collection probably, or at least one of, one of my favourites, definitely my favourite dress watch, and this is a little 1970s Beaumet Mercier. So I hope you can see that nicely. Now I'll just move the hands to, uh, to show you the dial. Difficult to uh, manage the light. So I'll just move the hands out of the way so you can see easily see the dial. There's another hour. There we go. So, this is a watch from the 1970s, as I've said. Um, <clears throat> do correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this model's from the 70s. <coughs> now, obviously it's not a new watch, but it's an interesting piece, because it has some technology that you would normally see only on the most expensive watches nowadays, um, and um, and really it's a privilege to own this. So it's uh, Beaumet Merci, Genève, no Geneva, Swiss made at the bottom here. It has a date complication, although um, it has no quick set, so to go through the, the days you have to scroll through all 24 hours of the day, which is a bit tiresome, but since I only wear this watch on special occasions, it, it's not really a problem. Sometimes I don't even bother setting the date. So it's not, not a problem for me. It also has this magnifying setup here, you see. Uh, however, it's quite hard to show you, it's not a cyclops, so there is actually no protrusion above the, um, the glass the crystal. It's actually a lens built into the cutting of the crystal, so it's on the inside, is that, is that, that lens is cut. Which is really nice, because I, I'm not a fan of, uh, for example, the Rolex Datejust, which I suppose is a contemporary of this watch, which has a protruding crystal um, with uh, the Cyclops. So it has a plexiglass um, crystal, because of course watches of that time, there, were, there weren't any sapphire watches that didn't exist, sapphire crystals. Um, no, yes, they couldn't manufacture them, so... Instead, they, they produce these plastic, which, which can be changed. Uh, but it, it gives it quite a nice patina. Um, now, the watch itself is uh, gold. It's uh, 18 karat gold. Um, and uh, please don't... Um, uh, you know, this really isn't a watch um, to show off at all, really. Don't take it this way. Um, it's... Uh, no, it's simply that vintage pieces tended to, you know, you'd see more low-end solid um, solid gold watches. Well, this isn't solid, this is um, 18 karat rather than 24, because of course that would uh, that would wear off very easily. The dial is also, um, it is, is also gold, as you can see, and it's got that nice uh, sort of uh, sundial effect, that sun ray effect, which is rather lovely. And then the, the indices are just printed on... But they do have some depth, as you can see, with the light reflecting off them. Um, uh, around the side, we see uh, you know it's got some hairline scratches, but that's you know you can expect that out of out of a, an old watch. Um, so the crown is small and uh, has little. Uh, it's very difficult to show you. I'll try and focus that. There we go. Little star on the end of it. And then here we have the individual watch's serial number at the top here. And then underneath we have the uh, the model number. And it's a simple case back, but with this quite interesting um, manner of opening it. So of course you have to have a special tool, which is tedious, but, uh, but nice. Now, the movement itself is beautiful, and I'm not prepared to take the back off this, so I'll include a photograph. Um, which we'll just skip to just now. Okay, so that's the photo I promised of the movement. So it's automatic, but you'll notice it doesn't have a big rotor 
it's actually a micro rotor. So that sits, you can see that little rotor on the right hand side of the movement. Um, and this is a uh, caliber uh, 13210, Bois Mercier caliber. Um, and it has a 54 hour power reserve, which for the time is spectacular. Um, because most uh, most well most watches nowadays have about the 38, 40 hour power reserve. So watch that old have, having a power reserve like that is pretty brilliant. The number of jewels is 30, um, which you know is is more than you'd usually have. It's still not as much as some of the new Omegas with 38 jewels, um, but it's pretty brilliant. You know, it's it's excellent. And those micro rotors, they're quite rare. Um, one doesn't usually find a micro rotor just because they're more difficult to build. It's much easier to build a movement where everything's based around a central axis. Um, so th that's why one doesn't usually see those micro-rotors. But uh, they're nice to see, and you can see there's that massive jewel above it um, on a big bearing there. Um, so actually, you know, the, 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 it's 30 jewels, but they're quite sizable jewels, and they're because they're, they're quite large bearings. Um, and the base caliber of this is a Buren 1321. Um, yeah, so that's based on that. Um, you can see in the ba the case back it says 750, uh, referring to the um, uh, the percentage of uh, per, well per mil uh, of gold in there, so three quarters gold, so 18 carat. Um, and uh, the case back also um, is only waterproof to 1 atm, so that's 10 meters, one, atm one atmosphere, one bar, um, which equates to 10 meters of water. But when we say, when they say 10 meters in the watch world, they mean um, the occasional uh, bit of condensation. They mean you know kind of cooking and um, sort of uh, e even you know, not submerging the watch at any time, just the most slight splash, you know, so it's not water resistant in any way. Um, so now I'll go back to the feed to talk about the casing of the watch. Um, and we'll just go back to that now. So, to the dimensions of the watch. The, um, the watch itself is... Um, uh, it's 34.5 millimeters across. I don't know what the lug to lug is, um, but I'll, I'll, inc I'll include that in the description. Um, but it is just a really beautiful watch, and it does have these elements of the time, time so this fluted bezel, as you can see here. It doesn't turn, obviously, it's a dress watch, but it's a fluted bezel, a bit like the early date justs, um, and the current date just, funnily enough. But the hands are completely different, so I'd say it sets itself apart quite nicely. The, um, the strap is uh, alligator skin, um, with a, a gold buckle, as you can see here. And uh, it's very, very thin. I mean, you can see. We'll compare it to. Uh, um, let's see, is there anything to compare it to? So here's. Uh, well, I mean, there's my finger, right next to it. So, you know, it's incredibly thin. It's eight and a half mils from top of from the top of the crystal to the bottom of the case back. Um, but it wears quite nicely. So I'll, ju I'll just give you a wrist shot here. Uh, I'll just hold it on. Actually, I, I will buckle it. Um, while I'm doing that, um, yeah, so it's 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 a nice piece actually because it does round off my collection as being that sort of luxury piece. Um, of course, you haven't seen all of my collection yet, but uh, um, a lot of my watches, especially lately, have been sport watches, um, such as this Persister, which I'm wearing on the other hand, which uh, dwarfs 39 mils, which is not particularly massive. Dwarfs the um, the Bois Mercier. So there, so it sits on my wrist quite nicely. Um, you know, and that's tw and it's 21 um, or 6 ticks a second, uh, which is perfectly fine. So, you know, I, I find that to be perfectly acceptable. Um, but it's, it's quite nice, and though I know people have shied away a lot from um, smaller watches, but uh, I think they're going to be back in, in terms of uh, f fashion, at least. Um, because if you look at some watches from the sort of 60s and 70s, a lot of men were wearing very, very small watches. Um, there was no need to wear, I, I admit this is a massive watch, and this is uh, sort of a, uh, a watch that would have been from the 60s and 70s, but this is a diving watch, so that's completely different, uh, d 
different uh, market. Um, I think I've told you everything about this watch. I mean, this one's been particularly good, Nick. Um, I mean, it does just just look absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, it, it is just a very, very beautiful watch. Um, it, it does, even as difficult as it is to do, it does manually wind, but of course it's got such a tiny crown, it's an absolute nightmare to get to do. Grip onto it, and also you can see, the previous owner had some, had probably had long... Oh, I scratched it quite badly around the crown, I'm trying to get it to focus to show you that. There we go, I mean, it's got quite a lot of scratches around the crown. Um, but thanks a lot for watching, as ever, I mean, do other reviews, perhaps some pens, you know, it's like this, this pen here, perhaps some of that. Um, but I will do other reviews um, of things other than watches. As you can see, I'm showing you my other uh, interests, so I've got some uh, opera on. Uh, and I'll include what that is and who, who it is in the description. So, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, a bit of a sort of... I'm, I'm not going to include the price on this one just because um, the markets fluctuate constantly, so really it will be irrelevant to tell you. Uh, how much it's uh, worth. So, thank you very much for watching, um, and uh, do follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm under the same name uh, and Twitter. So, thank you very much for watching, and uh, over and out. <laughs>